When it comes to transferring power from the batteries to the wheels of an electric vehicle, the rotor is one of the key elements. The rotor manufacturing process can be divided into six steps. 1. Design and Prototype The rotor's design depends on the materials used and the engineering requirements. The cost, strength, and availability of these materials strongly influence the design. These requirements and challenges are addressed during the design and prototype phase. Once the design is complete and the prototype is assembled, it is placed on a test bench. 2. Lamination The rotor's core is made of hundreds of small slices of metallic material called laminations. Each is stamped or punched and then thinly coated to protect from corrosion and provide better insulation. This process begins when all laminations are stacked one above the other and then stamped to create the rotor's core with the help of a hydraulic stamping press. 3. Magnets or Conductor Bars Insertion The rotor contributes to generating a magnetic field along with the stator. To do so, magnetic elements are installed in the rotor. Those can be magnets, conductor bars, or copper windings. Conductor bars are installed on the outside of the rotor, in the spaces left in the lamination design. They can be installed manually or using automated insertion equipment. 4. Machining and Laser Marking Once the core of the rotor assembly is created, it is machined to remove excess materials from the end rings and, if needed, create external design features. Since some rotors run at more than 10,000 revolutions per minute, machining must be very precise to achieve very high mechanical tolerances with a CNC machine. At this stage, the manufacture of the rotor core is complete. This is the ideal time in production to laser mark the lamination assembly. 5. Shaft Laser Cleaning and Press Fitting Manufactured separately, the shaft can be cleaned with a laser to remove oil, dust, or any contaminants remaining from its manufacturing. After cleaning, the shaft is inserted into the rotor's core using a pneumatic press fit machine. This is achieved by heating the rotor's core a few seconds before press fitting. 6. Impregnation and Balancing Now that the rotor is completely assembled, it is impregnated in a resin bath to improve its mechanical strength and protect it from external elements. These instruments monitor acceleration, rotation speed, and weight as the rotor spins. Adjustments are made until the balance is met. The next part is the making process of Beretta shotgun. There are a few basic processes that are essential. Forging. This is used to make the majority of iron and steel parts. Casting. This process is often used to make small parts, especially those of complicated shapes. Machining. This is a process that uses machine tools to finish parts that were made using forging and casting processes. Stamping. This is a more modern technology and is used to make parts out of sheet metal. Woodworking. Used to shape stocks for firearms from raw wooden blanks. Metal treatments. There are many types of metal treatments. Applying protective coatings, rust proofing, heat treatment hardening of certain components. Assembly. Taking all the components and putting them together. Testing. Here are 11 facts about Beretta you may knew. 1. Fabrica d'Armi Pietro Beretta is a privately held Italian firearms manufacturing company operating in several countries. 2. In 1526 its inaugural product was Arquebus barrels. By all accounts, Beretta made barrels equipped the Venetian fleet at the Battle of Lepanto in 1571. 3. Beretta has supplied weapons for every major European war since 1650. 4. Beretta has been owned by the same family for almost 500 years and is a founding member of Les Hennekeans, an association of bicentenary companies that are family-owned and operated. 5. Beretta manufactured rifles and pistols for the Italian military until the 1943 armistice between Italy and the Allied forces during World War II. 6. Beretta acquired several domestic competitors and some foreign companies in the late 1980s. 7. Beretta's sons are now direct descendants through their mother's side of the family. 8. Beretta is known for its broad range of firearms, side-by-side -side shotguns, over and under shotguns, semi-automatic shotguns, hunting rifles, express rifles, assault rifles, submachine guns, lever and bolt action rifles, single and double action revolvers and semi-automatic pistols. 9. 
The parent company, Beretta Holding, owns Beretta USA, Benelli, Franchi, Seiko, Stoger, Tika, Uberti, and the Burris Optics Company. 10. Model Beretta 92FS was the primary side arm of the United States Army, Marine Corps, Navy and Air Force, designated the M9 pistol. 11. In 1985, Beretta was chosen after a controversial competition to produce the M9, winning a contract for 500,000 pistols. Next, we will move on the bearing ball manufacturing methods. The ball bearing manufacturing process involves comprehensive procedures to ensure that the end products are smooth and perfectly round. 1. The initial process involves using an automatic machine to cut the rings to the recommended shape. The extra materials left after cutting are usually machined. 2. The second step is to stamp the outer ring faces with the necessary manufacturing information and bearing number. 3. Heat and harden. Next up is the hardening stage. Here, the rings go through a heating operation at 1565 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes. The rings are then quenched in oil at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for a duration of 15 to 20 minutes. The next step involves tempering the rings at 340 degrees Fahrenheit for about 2 hours. 4. The rings then go through a grinding operation using specialized grinding machines to produce the desired finished dimensions. Race grinding helps to achieve race location, geometry, and radius. Face grinding ensures that the ring has a proper bearing width. 5. Finally, the races go through a honing process to bring out a perfect surface finish and geometry. Concrete sleepers were introduced in the late 1890s but in India, these are manufactured and laid from 1982. Concrete sleepers are of two types monoblock and twin block concrete sleepers. In the railway sleepers manufacturing process, concrete sleepers are mostly used. So it is very important to know the steps involved in this type of sleeper. The manufacturing of concrete sleepers is similar to pre-stressed concrete units manufacturing. 1. Preparing molds. If you are manufacturing sleepers for the first time, you have to make the molds into required shapes and sizes. When you have a full size manufacturing unit, you can reuse molds for the production of sleepers. First, clean and ready molds that are used for the casting of concrete. Lubrication is done on the inner sides of molds, so this reduces or avoids sticky action of concrete towards molds. 2. Pre tensioning of strands. After cleaning and lubrication of molds, strands or cables are cut into the required shape and inserted into the molds. These strands are fixed at both ends using anchors. Now, these strands are tensioned using a hydraulic jack, then anchors are tightened. 3. Concreting. Concrete is pre-mixed and poured into the molds, then table vibrators are used for proper compaction of concrete and to fill the required shape with even distribution of mix. This completes the concreting process and shift it to steam curing. 4. Steam curing. The molds with the concrete are to be cured in steam for at least 11 to 12 hours. This technique allows concrete to gain early strength and consistency. 5. Removing molds. After curing for at least 11 hours, you can remove molds for further process. Using a trench or machinery to these molds. Removal has to be done carefully and separated. These molds can be reused for manufacturing purposes. 6. Wet curing. This curing technique is adopted for hydration process and gaining strength of concrete. After removing molds, sleepers are shifted to curing tanks which contains water. Now, these are kept for a minimum of 14 days period for the overall gaining of strength and durability of concrete. 7. Testing and transportation. These sleepers are tested for dimensions and moment of failure. Testing is to be done for at least one in every 250 manufactured units. After testing the sleepers, finishings have to be done by putting numbers and paint on the side surfaces. They are transported to the site and laid.